What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for Thursday, March 7th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and other viruses that could be a threat to you. For example, we're going to talk about mumps today. That's right, another virus from the past. So if you want to stay informed with all these viruses that really could be a threat to your health, because let's face it, ever since the COVID pandemic, we started to become more aware of all these other viruses that are going on, and each of them could pose a health risk to you, and it's good to be informed on them. If you want to stay informed, subscribe to my channel down below. You like the content you see? Give it a like. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube pushes this out in the algorithm, which means more people, you know, are safe and informed. Another way is by sharing these videos. The more these videos are shared, the more people we help keep safe, and that is a good thing. That's the goal here. The end goal of my channel is to help keep you informed and safe. All right, starting off today, it is a very busy news day, so we're not going to do as much data. We'll look at some wastewater sites, probably just a couple today, and then we'll also take a look at a few states as well. Starting off, as mentioned, we have to talk about mumps. There are eight cases of mumps that have been found in New Jersey. This was reported on my website, well, posted on my website by my moderator, Steve. He always posts his fantastic stuff. And he put in his post, summary, in the United States, state of New Jersey, authorities are investigating an outbreak of eight cases of mumps in a family cluster. The outbreak may be related to international travel. So yet again, an old school virus of the past has come back. It seems like all the M name viruses, mumps, measles, mpox, they're all uh, coming back to haunt us. And now it's in uh, New Jersey, it says international travel, We'll have to see if any more cases pop up. Not a good thing to see mumps coming back. Then we come over to this. Remember yesterday we talked about Ohio, or if you did not see yesterday's pandemic update, we talked about influenza-like illness. Rising at an alarming rate in Ohio, well, a similar thing is starting to happen now in Arkansas. Arkansas Department of Health reports Arkansas has high influenza like illness activity. I know, that is not a good thing. So we come down here and it says here, the latest viral respiratory disease update the Arkansas Department of Health reported very high influenza-like illness. And they also say that there is a large number of people that are going out to get over-the-counter medications to treat their symptoms. So yeah, this is something we'll have to keep an eye on. Moving on to this now. Health professional warns Flu lingers on longer this year. It's coming out of West Virginia. West Virginia residents are once again in the final grips of influenza season, and one health professional warns that it's sticking around longer than usual this year. Well, you know what? We've noticed that with the winter COVID wave as well. Remember that little bump in the road we had in February where it actually went back up just for a little bit, and then now it's back to going down again? Well, it's happening with flu in West Virginia. Let's read this part. What we are seeing this year is the hospitalizations are not as high, but the season is trending to linger on, Young tells Metro News. We've had about 15 weeks where we should be starting to see a decline in influenza-like illness. However, Young said the baseline in flu and respiratory illness case numbers across the state, remember West Virginia, is continuing to hover around 4.18% when by now it should be a baseline of 2.17% as the peak flu season has already come to a close. Young said this is causing health professionals to see double the amount of cases than they typically do by this time of year. So, wow, yeah, this is not good. All right, moving on to our next story. Measles, I said the M viruses, they're, they're out there to haunt us. Measles outbreak sparks a further 83 cases in UK and warning of worrying clusters. So, yep, measles cases, they're continuing to spread over in the UK. Then we come over to this, and it says two more cases of measles reported in Spokane County, Washington. I also did post this on my website. It's datareport.info, by the way. I should show you the website again. Datareport.info, and it's really a wrath of information. You can talk about U.S. general discussion for COVID, COVID treatments, COVID variants, support, long COVID, 
we got studies we have all kinds of different stuff that are just posted on there like if i see a study out there that comes out uh, more times than not i add it to the website which is free for anyone to sign up and you can post anything you want to talk about in any of the various different categories on the site again that is data report.info all right going back now where were we here okay we talked about the measles cases and now we have to take a look at this yes long covid get this long covid could now be linked to longer and harsher hangovers that's right if you have long covid and say maybe uh, you have an evening where you have a bit to drink alcohol you have an alcoholic beverage and you have a little bit of it and you have a hangover the next day well new study is finding that hey those hangovers they're a little bit more severe and harsh after having long COVID, or if you have currently experiencing long COVID. So that's relatively interesting. And now we do have some sad news to pass away. Jim Beard, who was the keyboardist for Steely Dan, was 63 years old. He died from complications of a sudden illness. He joined the band back in 2008, and it says he died of a sudden illness up in a New York City hospital. We don't really know much more other than that's what happened. He died up in the hospital it's not saying if it's covid it's not saying what it is chances are we may find out down the line for a lot of these uh, several months later we've been finding out the cause of death hopefully we find out what this cause of death is all right taking a look at air qualities for today air qualities across the country it's the usual suspects a little bit worse today on the west coast so actually a few more uh, sites that are reporting poor air quality than we saw yesterday and again where the wildfires are ongoing in Texas and now Oklahoma as well. Wherever those winds, see my hands? Wherever those winds are positioning, whichever way they're coming out of, that's where the smoke is going to spread. So today it's Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, portions of Illinois. You're all dealing with some uh, air quality issues today. Even Minnesota, look at this. Some uh, moderate is starting to pop up. Not bad on the East Coast today. We had the rainfall. That did cleanse the atmosphere, but next week, southwest winds are coming in. So if these wildfires don't go away, air quality, though the weather's supposed to be nice in the east next week, uh, air quality could become an issue once again. I do have the other channel, Climate Data Report, where I talk about that, as you can see here. And we haven't done a video there in uh, several days. Eventually, I will get back to posting on there. I'm hoping next week we can get back to maybe at least a couple days a week it's been crazy as of lately Alrighty, taking a look here philadelphia yesterday 757 ems incidents so that is as you can see here here's the day before that is slightly higher than the day before that's about 10 calls higher let's do a live look in with montgomery county pennsylvania which is a suburb of philadelphia and oh my i'm seeing 18 calls right now 10 26 a.m Yikes, it's, it's a busy day in Montgomery County. I'm seeing respiratory emergency, stroke, cardiac arrest, typical episodes, multiple typical episodes, cardiac emergency, another respiratory emergency, another one, another cardiac, yikes, yeah, it's busy. Let's see, is it any better in Chester County? Mm, slightly, but there's calls there as well. Sick person, seizures, sick person. Yeah, so there's a lot of calls. We had multiple heart problem calls. That's not always good to see. Let's take a look at the positivity rate from Walgreens. This is for COVID now. It is 13.9%. Last week was 17.4%. That's down 3.5%. Total tests, 2,595. The prior week was 3,071. All right, let's take a look at BioBot Wastewater. I am going to refresh this. Let's take a look here and see if there was any update for this. Of course, they always try and spam us. And, wow, take a look at this. All right, interesting picture here. So BioBot. It continues its drop, but when we come down region by region, northeast is dropping really nicely. The west coast is dropping really nicely. Uh, it slowed off a little bit in the south, but the Midwest, look at this. Midwest is kind of doing its own thing at BioBot. It's rising ever so slightly. Now, there's several different perspectives we can get. We can also get this perspective of wastewater scan. That's the one that I like to use. And today on wastewater scan, we're going to take a look at just a couple wastewater sites. And that first one's going to be Chattanooga that I have pulled up here. And Chattanooga, Tennessee, the wastewater site itself serves 400,000 people. So this is a pretty good sample size. You can see COVID is dropping at this time. RSV continues to drop. Influenza A is high but dropping, flattened out slightly. Influenza B is starting to rise at this time. And look at norovirus. 
starting to see a rise in norovirus once again. And coming down to hepatitis A, have been some detections, and I'm not seeing any detections of mpox at this time. All right, let's go northward of it, shall we? How about we come up to Detroit area? Warren, Michigan, it's just north of Detroit. It's a pretty big size wastewater site, 140,000 population. COVID, it's rising ever so slightly. RSV, eh, slight rise on the most recent update. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B has been rising steadily and now picking up the pace ever since, wow, back in January. So it's actually picked up the pace there. Norovirus, really high at this time for norovirus levels. Leveled off slightly. Hopefully it will start dropping soon. There is some detections of hepatitis A back in February. No detections of mpox at this time. And you know what? Let's do another wastewater site because I'm feeling nice today. Let's, how about, let's see, where do we want to go? Pick somewhere. How about we go over to Ohio? Remember yesterday we showed Ohio? Let's go to Youngstown, Ohio. See what's going uh, on there. Because remember yesterday we showed what was going on with the influenza-like illness in that story? All right, COVID at this time is flat. RSV is dropping. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B, look at this. It is pretty much uh, going vertical. It's rapidly rising. A little bit of a bouncing around. The most recent update, but February, it rose most of the month. Norovirus, that is also rising as well. No mpox detections. And you have to go all the way back to February to find the most recent detections of hepatitis A. So none for March so far. All right, continuing on. You can see here on the CDC site, wastewater is highest in the southeast. However, it is very high in Kansas still, and it's also high in Utah. And look at Delaware. Delaware is still at very high levels as well. Continuing on, let's come over to this map now. Flu, it's still growing in some places. Growing or likely growing from Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia, Ohio, Illinois, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska, even in Idaho and Washington. And when we look real closely here, take a look at this. Connecticut and Rhode Island, likely growing as well. Now, when you come up to COVID, it's just Idaho that's still rising. All right, let's take a look now at the latest update for variants. JN.1, it dominated. It, it really, if you look back here, JN.1 rose really quickly, but now it's leveled off. And now it's actually dropped ever so slightly. It's at 92.3%. Why did it drop? Well, you have JN.1.13 at 3.3% and JN.1.18 at 1.8%. And when we take a look at those variants, you can see here that they really came up quickly. Look at the JN 1.13. You can see it here on the charts when I have it highlighted. You can see it entered the picture quickly. We'll get another variant update again next Friday. Not tomorrow, but next Friday. I want to see if that actually doubles. And if it does, that would be rather concerning. All right, let's take a look at some of the stuff we daily look at. Hospitalizations in New Jersey, 520. And let me zoom this chart in a little bit. You can see, like I was saying yesterday, they're not dropping us. I mean, they're dropping a little bit now, but overall, since about mid-February, the drop has really slowed down. 26 people on a ventilator in the ICU, 69, and discharges. They did have 90 discharges today. Let's see if New York State updated yet. I don't think they did, but they may have. And taking a look here, all right, we do have a number from New York State. 1,557 new cases. That is a pretty decent size. Increase. Who knows? Maybe someone told them that, hey, Data Report's going to do his update earlier today. We better do our update earlier. Nah, I'm just kidding. I, I honestly don't know anyone who works at the New York State Department of Health. Taking a look here at the hospitalizations. And, hmm. So hospitalizations yesterday, they were below uh, 1,000. Hang on here. We have to actually refresh this again because I think something went wrong here. Nope. Looks like their hospitalizations went back in time for some reason. We're refreshing this, and it says data as of 2-28, 2024. How about we go back to this page as well? Uh, what's the data here? Yeah, 2-26, 2024. So these cases here, that's not up to date. I don't know what's going on here. All right, so forget about anything I just told you about in New York State. Their data is a little bit outdated. Maybe that'll get corrected later in the day. I hope we'll have a different number, a more accurate number out of New York State again tomorrow. All right, in closing today, we have to go to Colorado. And something strange is going on in Colorado. Look at this. Last week, the hospitalizations were 118. This week, 128. 
Yeah, that's a little puzzling because, look at this, cases are down by 268. That's a decent drop. But again, hospitalizations would indicate that, you know what, maybe the cases are rising ever so slightly. Emergency department visits, they're uh, flat at this time. So, yeah, there's a hospitalization increase there. Don't know what that's all about. It only went up by 10, but hey, an increase is an increase. And yet again, another state similar to New Jersey. What's happening in New Jersey where hospitalizations are not dropping all that fast now. In fact, they did rise this week. Hopefully next week they will continue their drop once again. Alrighty, guys, that does it for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow morning. We'll probably be in these morning updates for the next several days. And I want everyone to stay safe. You know, do the right thing. Wear a mask still. You have to because, you know, there's a lot of different viruses out there. Now, today we talked about mumps. I can't say that we've ever talked about mumps during a pandemic update. Who knows? Will there be another childhood virus of the past that pops out tomorrow from 40, 50, 60 years ago? I don't know, but they keep popping up. If you want to stay safe, subscribe to my channel down below. If you like this video, let's try and get 100 likes today because the more likes we get, the more they push this content out. Give it a thumbs up. And of course, share this with anyone you know. If you want to support the channel, you can do that down below. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you all again tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic Thursday.